Next up, we're going to cover questions and answers. Survey questions appear right here on the question tree. To add a new question, we simply click on the question, new, and select from the vari variety of question types. For this example, I'm going to click on single choice. A new question is added, and I can start configuring it. On the question tab, I can configure the question text, instruction text if I have a specific interviewer instruction that I'd like to add, and I can configure the color of the interviewer instruction text. In addition, I can configure the answers from the Answers tab. I can either use a pre-programmed scale, answer scale, we're going to cover that in a different video, or I can simply go ahead and manually add answers. This will add the answer, and I can add more answers. If I want to add many answers at once, for example, when I'm copying and pasting from a different application, I can click on the multi-add button and then put in all my answers one after the other. If I click on add, all of them will be added. If I want to make changes to all of my answers at once, I can use the multi-update button and then change answer 1 to ANS1, answer 2 to ANS2, etc. Once I click on update, all of the text will be updated. If I want to delete answers, I can select all the answers that I want to delete and click on this delete button. Sometimes we need to copy and paste answers from Word document tables that are vertical instead of horizontal. For example, in this table, let's say I need to copy and paste these answers to my survey. I select this, select copy, then in survey to go I click the multi-add button, right click and select paste. Now due to the fact these answers were vertical, they will show up like this, which is not the way that the multi-add needs the answers to be in. This is why we have this link, change tab to new line. If I click on that, it will replace the tab buttons to new lines and will allow me to add these answers. I can also change the number of columns that these questions will appear in. So if I click on two, questions will the answers will appear in two columns. If I select three, it will appear three columns. And I can also control the radio the render mode of these radio buttons. Note that each different question type has different rendering modes specific to the current type. If you're working in a right-to-left survey, you can change either your entire survey to be right-to-left or change this, just a specific question to be right-to-left. The rule tab controls the survey skipping and branching rules for this specific question. The first part is the entrance rule. The entrance rule controls whether this question will be displayed or not. In this case there is no entrance rule so this question will be displayed no matter what. We will cover entrance rule in our survey logic series. The validation rule controls whether you are allowed to leave this question. You can add all sorts of validation rules and logic that will control if the data that was put in is valid. 
And lastly, the jump rules. Jump rules control where you branch off from this question. So for example, if you'd like to branch to question number five, if this answer was DDD, you can do that from the jump rules. We, again, we will cover jump rules and validation rules and entrance rule in our survey logic series. The script tabs contain the question start script and the question end script. The question start script will run when this question is shown and the question end script will run once you leave this question. So you can do all kinds of filtering and all kinds of survey logic and custom survey scripts on the start and at the end of a question. The variable tab will control how this question will be exported. The variable name will be the Excel column name or the SPSS variable name for this question. By default, Survey2Go will, will name your question Q underscore in the index of the question. So this question will be question number one. And if we add another question, it will be Q underscore two. The missing value will control how this question will be exported if it's not answered. And finally, the short ID is an ID that you can change in control for yourself to hold some sort of a custom defined field for your own usage. For example, this could be the link to the question name on your Word document. While the variable needs to be unique, the short ID doesn't have to be unique. If you're planning on exporting this survey into SPSS, you'd like to click on the restrict variable to SPSS format check. The checkbox of the export controls whether this question will be exported in the data output or not. And you can control the actual coding of each of the question. In addition, you can control the properties of the answers by selecting a specific answer and clicking on Answer Properties. This allows you to both indicate that a specific answer is an other specify answer or that you want to not randomize this answer if it's a part of a randomization answer question. You can also add images to this, this specific answer to be displayed when the question is displayed. This is done by the Image Properties link. The Answer Properties can be accessed both from the Variable tab but also from the Answers tab by clicking on the Answer and clicking on Properties. Finally, in the Advanced tab, we have a lot of advanced features that we can control regarding this specific question. A couple of important ones are Allow No Answer which will make this question a non-mandatory question, starts at a new page, which if checked and you are working with multi questions per page, this will make sure that your question starts a new page. We have the image properties, which will control how images will be set when showing with text of an answer. And you can change the alignment. This will be the default for this question. You have the attachments link that allows you to add questions, or sorry, images or videos or sounds to this question to be shown on the device. And finally, we have the answer properties link, which allows you to set all various types of things or features for an answer, whether it's hidden or not to export that answer and allow a lot of advanced features for a answer that is not available on the answer properties window. On the bottom you have a, a lot of different attributes that you can set for this specific question. They vary from question type to question type but the general ones are here on the top and the most important one is this hide from surveyor. If you, if you set this one to true, this question will not be displayed 
to the actual interviewer in the, in the field. And you can use this setting to designate specific questions as dummy questions. A useful setting of the survey is to go to survey properties and show and check the show question index and short ideas question index. What this will do is show the short ID that we've configured as the prefix of this question. Now if you're working in this mode and need to make sure that this specific question does not show this index, you can click and turn the hide question index to true. This will remove this index and this prefix from the, from the question. The randomization on the bottom controls, controls whether this question has randomization or rotation assigned to it. We have a specific video on rotation and randomization, but in gen general, you can select that in this question, the answers will be randomized. If you check this box, the answers will be randomized. If you want to randomize the answers, but keep one answer always at the same spot, for example, at other or not do, do not know, you can let's add a demo quest answer. You can click on the answer properties and click on do not random. This will keep this, this answer as not randomized.